In the last video, we created an API using Django Ninja. In this video, what we're going to do is create a Next.js application and build a user interface around this API. And we're going to learn some concepts in Next.js along the way. For example, we'll see the distinction between server components and client components. We'll see how to use Tailwind and Daisy UI in a Next.js application. And we'll dive into the new Next.js app router paradigm. And I'm probably going to separate this into two videos, but this is the first one. So let's dive in and get started. So to start with, we're going to look at the React documentation here. What we want to do is build a new site with React. And React itself will recommend picking one of the React-powered frameworks that are popular in the community. And some of these include Next.js and Remix. And there's also Gatsby as well. Now, the most popular of these is Next.js. So what I'm going to do here is copy this command. And I'm going to go to VS Code. Now, I have a folder open here in VS Code with the back-end code from Django Ninja in the previous video. In the terminal here, you need to have Node.js installed. But what we're going to do is run this npx create next app command and that's going to generate a next application in this directory but it's going to ask some questions during the process so first of all we're going to install the create next app package and we're going to give this project a name and i'm going to call this devices front end and for this project we can either use typescript or not i'm going to select no to that and also to eslint but i am going to add tailwind css and we can add the source directory as well. And we are going to use the app router paradigm. So let's select yes to that. And we'll explain that later in the video. And I'm not going to customize that default import alias. We're just going to select no to that. And it's going to run through the installation of these packages now. While that's installing, I'm going to explain app router. This is the modern way of doing routing in a Next.js application. And what it's going to do is it's going to add an app directory into this source directory. So if we look at source, you can see there's an app directory here. And for the routes that you're going to create in the next application, you add folders with the names that you want to appear in the path for those routes. So for example, in this next slash react application, we want to add a route to fetch all of the devices from the Django Ninja backend. And we want that to be on the slash devices URL path. So what we're going to do here is create a route in the Next.js by adding a folder underneath the app directory. And that folder is going to be called devices. Now to create a page for that route, you can create a file called page.js within the directory. And this page.js file will contain the component, and that can be a server component or a client-side component in Next.js. We'll explain the difference between those in this video and the next video. Now, by default, the components that you add here are server-based components in Next.js, and that means that the code is going to run on the server, and what you return from the component, that's the HTML essentially that you're going to ship to the client. You're not going to ship as much JavaScript as you used to do in a React application because what you're doing here is generating a lot of the code on the server and that can be more efficient and we'll explain a bit more about that later. So let's now create a component and what you do is you can export the component in order to create it in this page.js file and the component is going to be an async function. So let's create an async function and we're going to call the component function devices. And what we can do here is return some JSX, which is basically like HTML here. And this is a convention in React. What you return from a component is JSX code that's used to render the user interface. What we're going to return here is this HTML. So we have a simple div that contains some flex classes from Tailwind CSS, which we're going to use in this video for styling. And then for now, we return a simple H1 that says my devices. Now, one thing to notice when you're using React and Next.js is that you don't use the normal HTML class attribute. You're using class name. And that's because this is JavaScript code and class is a reserved keyword. Now, in order to run this application, we can run the npm run dev command. Now, we need to be in the device's front end directory to do that. So let's go into that directory and run npm run dev. And that's a command that's been added to the package.json file when you run create next app. And that's going to start a server on localhost 3000. And if we go to that page, we can get the next JS landing page. If I go to the URL here and add slash devices, we're going to get back the styling and the content that we defined in that component. Now, the styles that you see here with this weird kind of striped look, we're going to remove them soon. Now, what I want to do now is talk a bit about Next.js rendering. As I mentioned earlier, in Next.js, we have the notion of server components. 
where the code runs on the server. And then we have client components where the code runs on the client. And client components will be familiar if you used to use React without Next.js, where you defined all of the code in a front-end application that ran on the client. And that JavaScript bundle was sent to the client and then the client side code would run and perhaps fetch some data from the back end. So it was a different process than just using server components. We're gonna dive into that in this video. Now by default, Next.js uses server components. So the content is generated and rendered on the server and a smaller bundle is sent to the client. And that means within our server component, like we have here, we can actually perform API requests from the server to our Django Ninja application. We can await the response for that request and then populate the content that's going to be returned to the client. So the actual code to fetch the data from Django Ninja will run on the server in the server component. And that's a little bit different to the way it used to be with client components because in a client component, you would get the bundle, you would then send a fetch request to the Django Ninja API, and then you would wait for the returned content and use that to update the DOM. We're going to show a different methodology here with the Next.js server components. And we're going to reference this page here on data fetching, caching, and revalidating. Now, because we have a server component, we are going to fetch data on the server with the fetch function. So Next.js actually extends the native fetch web API, but it adds some additional options that allow you to configure caching and revalidating behavior for each fetch request that's sent on the server. So if we look at the code in this Next.js component, you can see that in the component, we're sending a fetch request and we're awaiting the response from that particular endpoint. If the response comes back and it's not okay, the component then throws a new error. Otherwise, we return a JavaScript object containing the response data. Now, this is actually a function that's defined in the page.tsx file, and that's called within the component that's actually exported from this file. So what we're gonna do is something very similar. I'll leave a link to this page below the video, but what I'm going to do is go to VS Code, and just above the component, I'm gonna paste the code for a function called getDevices. And that sets up an endpoint that points to our Django server and it points to the slash devices endpoint that we configured in the last video with Django Ninja. So we send this next JS fetch request to that endpoint and again we check if there's any kind of error otherwise we will return the data from that endpoint and we can amend the code in our server component here to actually use this function. So I'm going to copy the name of the function and we're going to go down into the body of this component and we're going to get these devices by setting up a variable called devices and we're going to call that function called get devices and we are awaiting the response data and remember this is fetched on the server and we will then have access to the devices in the return statement here before it's sent to the client so let's go down here and i'm going to add some code into the jsx that's returned here I'm going to add a new div here, and this div contains some margin top to separate it from the h1 tag, as well as some flex classes. And what we want to do when we get the devices from Django Ninja is we want to map over them and for each device, render it on the page in this React application. So we're going to define a bit of JavaScript code, a bit of dynamic code here that's going to look at the devices that we have in our component. And that is these devices that were fetched from Django Ninja. And then we're going to map over these. And for each device, we have an arrow function. And we're going to create some JSX here. So for each device, I'm going to create a paragraph tag. And I'm going to give this a class name. And let's give it a class of text extra large from Tailwind. And within the paragraph tag, we're going to take the device that we are iterating over. And that is an object coming back from our Django Ninja API. And it has a key called name. So we're going to render out the device name. And one other thing we need to do is add a key that's going to have a unique identifier for each device. And the key is going to be the device.id property. Now, at the moment, I'm getting an error, and that's because I need to start the Django server. So we're sending a request to Django here, but Django is not currently running, so it's not returning any content. I'm going to open a new terminal here. And within this backend directory, I'm going to activate the virtual environment for the Django project. And then we're going to start the Django server using the run server command. Once that's running, we can go back to our Node application, and I'm gonna restart this server here. And once that's started up and it's running, we can go back to the browser, and now we're getting a list of the sensors that are coming back from our Django Ninja backend. 
So what's happening here is that we fetch the data in the component by calling this function called getDevices. That sends a request from Next to the Django application. It fetches the devices which we get in the component and then within the HTML or the JSX that we're returning from this component we are mapping over each device and for each one of them we're rendering out a paragraph tag and we are rendering out the device's name. So a very simple user interface, but it's showing how we fetch the data from Django in a server component in Next.js, and then use the response from Django to populate the content we're returning to the client side. Now, one thing I want to quickly remove is the kind of striping effect that we have here. There's a file in the Next.js project called globals.css. So I'm going to go to that, and I'm going to scroll down to the body block, and I'm going to remove this CSS code. If we save this and go back to the page, you can see we now get a white page containing the sensors in a paragraph tag. Now, one of the benefits of using Next.js instead of React itself is that we get back a populated page containing the data from the back end, and that's better for SEO purposes. If we look at the source for this page, so I'm gonna inspect the DOM here, we get the body and then within that we have the div and all of the sensors here are already populated when they're returned from the back end. And we can prove that by looking at the page source. I'm going to check line wrap here so we can see this better. You can see the paragraph tags that are rendering out each sensor, each device. So the actual source code that we get back from the server already contains all of the data. And therefore, this is better for SEO because any crawlers that are indexing your website can actually see the data and it's not having to be loaded after the fact by a JavaScript application. So that's one benefit of Next.js with server components. We're going to move on now and we're going to build a device detail page. So I want to add a link to each of these devices. And when we click that link, we're taken to a detail page. And for that, we're going to need to reference each device's ID in the URL. So it's going to be slash devices slash ID. And we need a URL that contains a dynamic part. So let's now see how to do that. I'm going to open some documentation from Next.js here on dynamic routes. If you need to create a dynamic route segment, what you can do is wrap the folder's name in square brackets like this. And typical examples of that is when you're fetching an individual item, you would wrap the ID or the slug for that item. And that's what we're going to do now because if we go back to our Django application, I'm gonna to go to the models.py file and the device model class that contains a field for the slug. And we want that to be present in the URL on the front end. So what we're going to do is go back to the app directory and within the devices directory, we're going to create another route here. So we'll create a folder within that directory. And this is going to contain a dynamic route segment, and we're going to call it slug. And as before, we're going to create a file in here called page.js. And we're going to create and export a function called device from this file. So this is the Next.js server component that's going to render the page for an individual device. And this is going to get the params from the URL. So we can destructure these params like that as we define this component. Now what we're going to return here for now is going to be some JSX code. So I'm going to paste some code in here. And again, we have a div with the classes for Flexbox. And this time we are going to take the device and we want to render details about that device. Now for now, we're just going to look at params.slug and the slug again is coming from this dynamic route segment. It's going to be present in the URL path. So let's leave it as that just now and we can go back to the other page.js file for the device list page. And to the devices that we're rendering here in this paragraph tag, we want to actually add a link to the detail page. So how do we do that in Next.js? Let's start by separating these into some lines here so that it's a bit cleaner. So each device has a paragraph tag, but we're going to bring in an import from Next.js in order to create a link to the detail page. Let's go to the documentation where we have a component called link that allows us to provide this client side navigation. So if we scroll down to the code snippet, I'm gonna bring the import into our file here at the top. So right at the top, just above this get devices function, let's import link from the Next.js module back to the paragraph tag, I'm going to wrap the code in here in a link tag. And to the link, we provide an attribute called href. And to link to the device's detail page, we need to look at the device and get the slug from the device. So in order to do that, let's create a block of code here. And we're going to use a template string in JavaScript. And this is client side, so it's going to be slash devices. And we need to reference this slug that we created here. So in order to do that, we're going to pass in a dynamic variable here in this string. And we're going to reference device.slug. 
So in JavaScript, if you have a template string, you can use the dollar sign and the curly braces to refer to a value. Let's now close off the link tag, and I'm going to bring this device.name into the link tag. So the actual text that's going to be rendered in the link, I'm going to paste that in here. And because we're no longer just referencing a paragraph tag, I'm going to add some styles into this paragraph tag. So because it's a link, we're going to make it blue. And when we hover over that link, we're going to darken that blue color. Let's go back to the page and we can see that each sensor, each device now is wrapped in a link. So let's try clicking one of these and we get taken to the device detail page. And at the moment, all we're getting here is the slug from the URL. You can see that in the URL above here. We're referencing that here in the page and that is done through the params that are passed into the component and you can get access to any dynamic route segments through these params. Now, of course, what we actually want to do is we want to take the slug and we want to send a request to Django Ninja and we want to fetch the details for that particular device. Now, how do we do that? What I'm going to do is go back to the backend directory and we're going to look again at the api.py file that we used in the last video. And we have an endpoint here slash devices slash slug on the Django Ninja API. And that's going to return a single device. So we need to call this URL within the device detail page. So let's go back to page.js and we're going to create another function just above this component in order to fetch that data. Very similar to what we did here in the previous component. So I'm actually going to copy this and we're going to bring it into the other file. So we're going to paste this in and we're going to call the name of this function get device because we're only going to fetch a single device. Now we need the slug, so we're going to append the slug to this URL. So I'm going to pass the slug in as a parameter here. And then we're going to use a JavaScript template string again here. And we can reference the slug using that syntax. So let's pass the slug into the URL path. We then send a fetch request to that endpoint. But what I'm going to do is amend this and add some configuration that's specific to Next.js. We can add a key called cache. And I'm going to set that to a value of no store. Now the reason we're adding cache no store is because we're going to modify the device later in the next video. Notably, we're going to update its location. So we don't want Next.js to cache the response data from this endpoint. So if you want to tell Next.js when it's performing these requests to avoid storing the data in the cache, you can pass cache no store to the fetch request. Now what we need to do is add a call to get device within our function here, within our component. So let's create a variable here called device and we're going to await calling get device, but we need to pass params.slug into that function. Once we've done that, we're going to amend the content that's returned to the client here. And what I'm going to do is paste some code in here just so that this doesn't take too much time. So what we've got underneath the h1 tag is another div. And in that div, we have a paragraph tag and we're rendering out the device's ID and its name. So we're getting access to the device properties because we're calling this get device function, which in turn will call Django Ninja in order to get the device details. And then underneath the device ID and the device name, we have another div with a class name of margin top three. And then what we're doing is we're checking if the device has a location and this uses a JavaScript ternary operator. And if the device does have a location, we are rendering out that location here in a span and we reference the location property on the device. And that's a nested object that we can follow to get the name of that location. For more information on that, you can check out the API video on Django Ninja. And if we don't have a location, we can just simply render out that the device does not have a location. And at the bottom, we have a button that has an assign location piece of text. And we're going to, in the next video, add some code for that button so that it brings up a modal and it allows you to reassign a location to the device. So let's save this file and go back to our device detail page. And you can see that that has been updated with the new code. So we're fetching the device and we have the slug that's in the URL here. And then we have this simple paragraph containing the device ID and the name of the device. In this case, we have a temperature sensor and the current location for that device is the greenhouse. Our button that says assign location does nothing at the moment. We'll work on that in the next video. And if we go back here to the device list page and we select one of the other sensors, let's see the proximity sensor. You can see we get the details for this one, including its ID and the location is the garage. So again, we're fetching this data from Django Ninja from the back end in our Next.js server component. 
And then within that server component, we take the data that we've retrieved and we use it to populate what's returned to the client. And this is going to contain all of the information from our backend API when the page first renders on the client. And that again is very good for SEO purposes. Now, what I'm gonna to do to finish this video is I'm going to work a little bit on this button here. We're not gonna create the modal and allow users to assign a location to a device, but we want to start by populating this component with not only the devices, but also all of the possible locations. Now, in the last video, if we go back to api.py, we created an endpoint using Django Ninja to fetch all of the locations from the backend. And that had the URL slash API, then slash locations. And we can see the data returned from that page here. We have in our system, three locations, and we now want to fetch them in the device detail page so that when we click this button in the next video, the form that we have is automatically populated with those locations. So what I'm going to do is go back to the detail component and we've defined this function called get device. I'm going to define another function that's almost identical just below this. And this one is going to be called get locations. And this time we're sending the request to Django Ninja and we're going to the API slash locations endpoint to fetch all of the locations from the Django Ninja API. And as before, we await fetching the response and then if there's any problems, we will throw a new error. Otherwise, we will return the JavaScript object with the location data. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to the component and it's here that we call the device endpoint. And we could do the same below to get the locations, but we want to actually perform these requests in parallel. And that's because if we added a second API call just below here, what is going to happen by default is that we're going to wait on this one returning because of the await statement. And then only when it's returned, are we going to send the second API request? So this is sequential, but we can actually parallelize this. And we can do that with the promise.all function in JavaScript. So I'm gonna delete this line of code and we're going to create a new line of code just below here. And what we're gonna fetch is not only the device that we were fetching before, but also the locations. And we're going to use a call to promise.all. So we're gonna await the response from this. And what we pass to promise.all is an array of promises. So let's pass a JavaScript array here. And we're going to take the get device function that we had before and we're going to paste that in there and we're also going to add the get locations function so we can remove this original line of code and what we're doing here is we're fetching both the device and also the locations and we're doing it in parallel and awaiting the responses from those so let's just make sure that nothing has broken on this page if we refresh this page you can see we still get the data for the device and if we go back we're still getting the list page as well so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back here and just to finish the video, I'm going to make sure that we've actually fetched the locations just with a little bit of dummy code. So right at the top here, underneath the div, but above all of the other content, I'm going to create an expression here in the next component. And we're going to take these locations that we fetched from Django Ninja and I'm going to use the dot map function. And for each location, let's just render it out or rather let's just render its name out. So we're gonna reference the location.name property and that name property, if we go back here, it's one of the fields on the response data for each location. So let's go back to our application and you can see the different locations right at the top here. And there's no spacing between them, but you can clearly see we have the office, we have the greenhouse and the garage. So we have the locations available in this component. In the next video, when we click this button, we want to bring up a modal and we want to allow the user to select a new location for the device and then send a request to Django Ninja that's gonna reassign this particular device to its new location. So that's coming up in the next video. But in this video, we've covered a few different things. I want to give a quick overview of some of this. We've covered Next.js server components, and that's all the components that we've used so far. These are all running on the server, and all of the requests that we're sending are going to be sent to Django from the Node.js server and then returned to the client in this statement here. So what happens when the client sends a request is that the request reaches this server, it then sends the request to Django, fetches the data, and then populates the content that's being returned to the client. We're going to see an example of a client component in the next video, but what we also saw in this video is the ability to use the Next.js fetch request and also links in Next.js. If we go back to the device list page, we imported the link and we used it in the code here 
in order to allow us to send the user from one page to another on the client. And finally, we saw a little bit about the Next.js app router paradigm, and that's a new paradigm in Next for routing. We have an app directory where we create folders underneath that directory that represent the routes on our client side application. So that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if you're enjoying this content, please consider buying a coffee. Link is in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.